hello everybody. Today <clears throat> I'm going to do a little bit of a leaf through, through a book which is pretty much a blast from the past. It's called Mysteria Arcana. It was released for Das Schwarze Auge, The Dark Eye in 1997. Um, it is an interesting mixture of, I would say, in-game text and text that should be used, I would say, mainly by dungeon masters, but could, in theory, also be used by players, although there are sections in this book which clearly state the following information is only known to about 20 people in Aventuria, which is the world in which uh, the Dark Eye is set. So it definitely places the um, dungeon master or the, the, the storyteller, again, as is quite often the case in the Dark Eye, in this position of somebody who's almost got <clears throat> godlike status in terms of that they definitely know things and know how certain things work together that is um, nothing that other mortals would know. <clears throat> and here you can see it's Höhere Geheimnisse der Aventurischen Zauberei, Ergänzungen zur Enzyklopädia Magica von berufener Stelle korrigiert und redigiert Stürmann und Mezzani Grango 2507 Horas. Now this whole face basically is an in-game name of a book which says these are the higher <clears throat> secrets of um, magic in Aventuria and even the printer and the person that wrote it is, um, and the editor are fictitious people. They are not real. So Grango is a very important city in Aventuria on the uh, west coast. And um, 2507 is, Horas is um, a particular date in that. Um, it was released in 1997. And Ulrich Kiso was still working on it. Ulrich Kiso is uh, called the spiritual father of the Dark Eye, of the three people who founded the Dark Eye, Alpers, Fuchs and Kiso. Only Fuchs is still alive. Kiso was definitely the person that spent the most time on Aventuria, that created the most content. Some say it even killed him because in 1997 he died from his second and massive heart attack. <clears throat> A first one had left him, I don't want to say housebound, but clearly impaired and he wasn't able to do much physically after that and then in 1997 the second one hit and he sadly died at a very young age he wasn't yet 50 um so this is probably one of his last works in with regard to in-game or game texts <clears throat> um when we look at the content we have all kinds of information in there we have um what is magic? Where does it come from? But also, how can we use magic in a role-playing game? Because magic, if used excessively, can actually completely break your game. So there are some tips in there. Um, <clears throat> it also explains quite uh, clearly how magic works in Aventuria, which is quite different from the way it works in other areas. You don't really um, get that much um, in-depth information um, as you might find in later publications, because obviously, as you all know, The Dark Eye has been written since 1983. And with some retconning, which always happens if you tell a story over almost 40 years, um, mostly the information has stayed the same. It has maybe em been embellished or maybe given more depth, but the basic cornerstones and foundations have not really changed. <clears throat> so um, it basically explains how magic works, the different types of magic that there are. There is the so-called mages. They, they, we have three types there, the white, the gray, and the black mages. Um, also how they have behaved during the history of Aventuria, which is a lot longer than the um, 36 years that we've been playing, or 37 um, also the different um, magical societies, how they have waxed and waned over the over the centuries and millennia. Um, it also tells a little bit about the geodes, which are 
dwarven ma magic users, the witches and the druids and um, the differences between their magic. Um, this has been later on also intensified the differences between those um, different schools of magic. So, for example, in DSA 4, it's stated quite clearly, and I haven't found it in this book yet, but it could be that I just overlooked it, <clears throat> that, that witches draw their power from their emotions. And their magic is something that cannot be learned as such. It's not something that you can look at and analyze as a mage. Then understand the matrix and learn it. It's very different. The witches also are very secretive. They don't share their knowledge, which is also why I in my games don't allow non-witches to use witch spells. Because the way they are... Um, if you like, created and then used is not based on intellectual prowess, the ability to concentrate, but it is really, really emotional. And also, <clears throat> witches have to be standing on the ground for magic to work. So a witch that's flying a broom cannot work magic. Very interesting. Um, in certain editions, there are rules about, you know, what happens when you're standing on a bridge, what happens when you're standing on a boat, so some say, okay, well, yeah, when you're standing on a boat, you are floating in water, which of course means witches don't have contact to the uh, the earth. But they say, well, you know, you've got a, a wooden planks there, so that would work. I wouldn't allow this. <clears throat> if a witch was on board a ship and was trying to cast a spell, I would definitely give her a lot of um, a lot of uh, penalties. If she was standing on a bridge, the penalties would also be there because she's also standing um, above running water. However, of course, the end, the ends of the bridge are connected to Sumu, which is the earth. So she, the penalties would still be there, but there would be less. And when she's flying, she can't cast any spells anyway. Um, it also tells you about the different spheres. So the idea is <clears throat> that um, the the world itself is made up of different spheres and the seventh sphere is the sphere where demons live and it's one that um, has been breached so demons can come into our world um, and then the third sphere is the sphere where humans live and where elves live and dwarves live and it's the it's the sphere whoops of the <clears throat> of the real world and it basically explains um, uh, how these spheres work um, it talks about um, time, which is very important because playing with time, changing time is actually sacrilege and taboo. Um, it talks about the world of the ghost. Um, it talks about the demons, demonology, all of this information. Um, it talks about um, the elements and how they work. Um, and it's also a pandemonium. Now, one might say, okay, well, when we look at the pandemonium, <coughs> We see these um, we see these values here. So this one, in order to um, invoke this one, uh, you know, it's you get a penalty of forty five. So invoking um, Mektagor, the blind eye, um, the uh, the knowing madness, you have to be really, 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 really good. No player character would probably ever be able to pull this off. Um, it's got 5,000 life points. <clears throat> Na komm. Hopp. Du schaffst es. Na komm. Hopp, geh jetzt erst hier rauf. So ist richtig. Mm-hmm. <laughs> 
So, <clears throat> as I was saying, sorry, and the battery on the other one died. It has 5,000 life points. Nobody's ever going to be able to fight this and survive. Um, AU is um, something like um, Endurance, which isn't used in DSA 5 anymore. It's used in DSA 4, but it depends on whether you want to use it. I don't. And its, it's Endurance is infinite. So magic resistance is 50. You can forget about trying to kill us. So here's, a, here's an old picture of, of demons. So that's probably a Hesh, Hesh tot up there, the one with the, with the whip and the, and the sword. <clears throat> that's probably a Zant. Um, so you could say that, you know, considering that the values are for a very, very old edition, this is not really valuable anymore. But I tend to disagree because, first of all, you've got them all in a really nice book. Secondly, I love vintage books. Thirdly, I have the Pandemonium Part One, which doesn't contain all of the pan, which doesn't contain all of them, and it's also a huge book. I bought it because I like having hardcover books, and I like supporting um, the the publisher. Because if we don't support the publisher, if we were all go to go rogue and download illegal um, <clears throat> um, PDFs, then um, we would soon be very, um, uh, very, very um, sorry about this. Um, it also tells you about how to um, make artifacts, which I've never ever explored myself. Um, but I think for my campaign of um, uh, the Sieben Gezeichneten, um, I may actually um, look into this because um, if we have somebody that can make artifacts, or if we think about this for higher level um, people, then that might be um, a good idea. Now here we've got um, known magical artifacts. Now. While magic exists in um, Aventuria and TDE, it's by no means prevalent. At the beginning of the book, there's even statistics as to how many magic users there are across Dere, and it's not very many. <clears throat> what is even less common are magical items. So this idea of, oh, I'm going to go into a dungeon, I'm going to kill the dragon, I'm going to end up with a magic sword plus one, isn't going to happen. I have never ever had an, a character that has a magical item, except once, but that was a gift from the elves, which is important because you need it for the campaign to work, otherwise you will just be killed very, very easily. And that was a pair of boots, which allows the wearer to cast a spell called Acceleratus, which makes you faster, more difficult to hit, once every seven days. That's not very powerful. <clears throat> Especially since it can be used by anyone, even if you're not a spellcaster, but then chances are, and in my case that was the case, the required um, stats are quite low because I played a fighter, so I was very, very dexterous, I was very, very strong, um, but my intelligence <clears throat> um, and intuition weren't high enough, or weren't as high. So for me, actually, even casting this spell was quite difficult. Um... And here we have something else that I really love. Um, at the end, there is the magical library. And this magical library contains um, books. And these books are in-game texts that have been referenced throughout 36 years of, of, of history of DSA, <clears throat> TDE. And it's so nice because you can, you can basically see... Um, this is magic, power of persuasion. And it tells you the format. So this has 120 pages. It's an octavo. Um, and it's been around for about 15 years in all magical academies. So it's not a very rare book. And it tells you a little bit about what it does and what kind of spells you may find in there. So it's really nice because when you then try to fill your <coughs> magic, um, your magical... Um, library in a let's say in an academy where one of your one of your um pcs is playing you can say well you go to the library you find the following books um or on your bedside table you have the following book because it's one that's very very common and everyone reads it and it makes the whole thing come to life and this is why i like this book because it is um <clears throat> although it is old it basically contains a lot of stuff 
that you can use. So for example, here you've got um, famous or um, known astrological symbols. So these are the gods. Um, here we've got um, the sun, that's Prios. Here we've got a sword and um, shield, that's Rondra. Here we've got the um, trident, that's Effort. We've got the um, goose, that's Travia. The broken wheel, that's Boron, the god of death. We have the, um, the snake, that's Hisinda, the goddess of knowledge. Um, bow and arrow, Firun, god of, the god of the hunt, Tsar. She's the god of eternal youth and life. Fex, that's kind of like a stylized fox's face. Fex is, um, Fex Fox, you know, you can see, you can easily hear the, the, the connection there. He's the god of, <clears throat> well, I guess, on the one hand, trade. But also a little bit of maybe thievery, you know, one-upmanship in trade. Perine, um, that's um, an ear of corn. She's the goddess of um, growth, of fertility, of... Um... So, <clears throat> as I was saying, sorry, um, the battery on the other one died. It has 5,000 life points. Nobody's ever going to be able to fight this and survive. Um, AU is um, something like um, endurance, which isn't used in DSA 5 anymore. It's used in DSA 4, but it depends on whether you want to use it. I don't. And it's, its endurance is infinite. So magic resistance is 50. You can forget about trying to kill this. So here's, a, here's an old picture of, of demons. So that's probably a Hesh, Hesh tot up there, the one with the, with the whip and the, and the sword. <clears throat> that's probably a Zant. Um, so you could say that, you know, considering that the values are for a very, very old edition, this is not really valuable anymore. But I tend to disagree because, first of all, you've got them all in a really nice book. Secondly, I love vintage books. Thirdly, I have the Pandemonium Part One, which doesn't contain all of the pan, which doesn't contain all of them, and it's also a huge book. I bought it because I like having hardcover books, and I like supporting um, the the publisher. Because if we don't support the publisher, if we were all go to go rogue and download illegal um, <clears throat> um, PDFs, then um, we would soon be very, um, uh, very, very um, sorry about this. Um, it also tells you about how to um, make artifacts, which I've never, ever explored myself. Um, but I think for my campaign of um, uh, the Sieben Gezeichneten, um, I may actually um, look into this because um, if we have somebody that can make artifacts or if we think about this for higher level um, people, then that might be um, a good idea. Now, here we've got um, known magical artifacts. Now, while magic exists in um, Aventuria and TDE, it's by no means prevalent. At the beginning of the book, there's even statistics as to how many magic users there are across Dere, and it's not very many. <clears throat> what is even less common are magical items. So this idea of, oh, I'm going to go into a dungeon, I'm going to kill the dragon, I'm going to end up with a magic sword plus one, isn't going to happen. I have never ever had an, a character that has a magical item, except once, but that was a gift from the elves, which is important because you need it for the campaign to work, otherwise you will just be killed very, very easily. And that was a pair of boots, which allows the wearer to cast a spell called Acceleratus, which makes you faster, more difficult to hit, once every seven days. That's not very powerful. <clears throat> especially since it can be used by anyone, even if you're not a spellcaster, but then chances are, and in my case that was the case, the required um, stats are quite low because I played a fighter, so I was very, very dexterous, I was very, very strong, um, but my intelligence <clears throat> um, and intuition weren't high enough or weren't as high. So for me, actually, even casting this spell was quite difficult. Um... And here we have something else that I really love. Um, at the end, there is the magical library. And this magical library contains um, books. And these books are in-game texts that have been referenced 
throughout 36 years of, of, of history of DSA, <clears throat> TDE. And it's so nice because you can you can basically see um, this is magic, power of persuasion. And it tells you the format. So this has 120 pages. It's an octavo. Um, and it's been around for about 15 years in all magical academies. So it's not a very rare book. And it tells you a little bit about what it does and what kind of spells you may find in there. So it's really nice because when you then try to fill your <clears throat> magic, um, your magical um, library in a, let's say, in an academy where one of your one of your um, PCs is playing, you can say, well, you go to the library, you find the following books. Um, or on your bedside table, you have the following book because it's one that's very, very common and everyone reads it and it makes the whole thing come to life. And this is why I like this book because it is, um, <clears throat> although it is old, it basically contains a lot of stuff that you can use. So for example, here you've got um, famous or um, known astrological symbols. So these are the gods. Um, here we've got um, the sun, that's Praios. Here we've got a sword and um, shield, that's Rondra. Here we've got the um, trident, that's Effort. We've got the um, goose, that's Travia. The broken wheel, that's Boron, the god of death. We have the um, the snake, that's Hisinda, the goddess of knowledge. Um, bow and arrow, Firun, god of, the god of the hunt, Tsar. She's the god of eternal youth and life. Fex, that's kind of like a stylized fox's face. Fex is um, Fex Fox, you know, you can see, you can easily hear the, the, the connection there. He's the god of, <clears throat> well, I guess, on the one hand, trade. But also a little bit of maybe thievery, you know, one-upmanship in trade. Perine, um, that's... Um, an ear of corn. She's the goddess of um, growth, of fertility, of um, the corn and everything. Ingerim, that's the god of fire and um, the forge. And Raya, I don't know what this stands for, but she's the goddess of sex and lust. And we're really talking sex and lust, like Aphrodite. Um. And then here you've, you've got signs for the lesser gods, left hand, for example, Aves, Kor. Um, this one is the nameless one. He is um, the evil one, the, the 13th god. Um, and here are the phases of the moon. And you've also got um, other symbols. And you can easily use these. So these are actually um, different um, scripts used um, for... Um, for writing down magical knowledge and you can easily use these to um to come up with your own kind of like riddle and stuff and just present your players with this kind of thing so i really really love this book unfortunately it's no longer available i got this as a present and i mean um this is this is a super present um not only because it's rare but because it's a book that you wouldn't normally get otherwise it's just you know, it's no longer there. It's no longer available. There is no PDF available either. I found somebody who's got a PDF, but it's basically somebody else's PDF book PDF and the quality is really bad. Um, I don't know if they're ever going to um, bring this out as a PDF. I wish they did because um, I believe it's a very nice compendium and um, it's just really nice. It's a, it's a really nice read. And even though you may not be able to use these, so for example, this one, this one is actually fine, you know, attack nine, per, um, parry six, life points 20. So you could actually use this, that would work. Yeah, that would work. <clears throat> so these values actually work. So um, you might want to double this because he's a golem and he has an attack of six and a parry of two. But he does do two. Yeah, well, I mean, probably he is very bad at attacking and parrying because he's kind of, yeah, it says here that he is very clumsy. Um, and slow. 
Yeah. So, and then you've got um, a two meter high um, golem made from wood, and then you've got attack 15. So you have to roll a d20 and under roll and parry a five. Yeah, because he only uses his fists, but then he does 2d6 damage. So that's actually quite a strong one. And he's got 150 life points. So he's, but you know, he would be, he would be takeable. So that would be something that you can look into. So again, you can always take these and then check if you're going to be able to use them. <clears throat> so uh, this is uh, Mysteria Arcana. A look at a very old, well, 23 years old, but I guess in, in this day and age, this is very old book um, from Das Schwarze Auge, published by Fanpro, way back when, Fantasy Productions. Um, yeah, and I hope you found this video interesting, and I'll talk to you soon. Bye-bye. <laughs>